Thank you for the opportunity to uh, present here. So I really just want to very quickly go through the Adopt and Spread program that's been running for the last two years. And as part of this program, some of you will be very familiar with it, but as part of this pro program, I should emphasize it's a very collaborative effort. It's uh, funded by Welsh Government, but all the organizations, health boards and trusts in Wales have been part of making, shaping it and making it a, a success. This is what we're going to be announcing. So from that point of view, thank you to all of you in the audience who, who have been part of this as well. So I am just going to very quickly tell you about the programme. So the programme started in officially in January 2020. And the idea that exemplars existed with this pipeline and all the conversations that you've had so far about the importance of exemplars work spreading across Wales, well, that's what the programme was there to tackle. So with an invite to adoption sites, and I'll start to tell you a little bit about a distinction between the innovator and the adopter, but with an invite to the adoption sites to come forward given a set of exemplar projects they could choose from, we recruited 15 exemplars working with over 40 adoption sites, which have since grown. So we have grown in terms of the adoption sites we work with. The offer was a, li was a little bit uh, paralleled with the exemplar offer. We learned from the last five years of exemplar work and, and put into place a, a set of learning opportunities. A lot of that came from the workshops and training that was offered, but really the offer was you have to attend six network days, um, which became online network days and became half days plus le additional learning opportunities. We invited everybody. So even though I talk about uh, over 40 adoption sites, they came with their teams. They had team members. That was really important as part of our programme. We also put in this idea around cohort based learning. So they came together as a cohort on network days, but we also brought to them together as projects. Um, so each exemplar uh, was given a project title, as it were, and all the adoption sites under them came together as well with a little bit of one to one support where it was needed. So we have a map, we have a network map um, forming as part of this live research and evaluation programme, um, which shows that some pulled on that one-to-one -one support more than others, and some pulled on it at various points. So they didn't need it all the time, but when they needed it, they sometimes needed a lot of it. So that was part of what we learned as well. We did hand out some grants as part of this. This was part of the programme to give um, grants to support the adoption sites. And this varied quite a lot. Sometimes it was very small seed funding and sometimes it was slightly larger amounts to kickstart larger projects. Just to give you a flavour of what happened, really, 46 successful applications for adoption sites. These numbers will keep changing. We mapped, we tracked on a monthly basis what was happening. And I call it a pause on pause kind of situation. But basically, March 2020 hit. Um, a lot of people were obviously at the, in the mix of trying to make it happen, uh, make their adoption site go live, and they had to stop. So they stopped. We call that a pause. But when they stopped and told us they couldn't carry on at all because of what had happened, we called it a stop. So you can see there was a movement and there's more movement that we have documented than what I'm showing you here. But the movement um, did bring those projects back. So we helped unpause a lot of projects and we also started bringing in new projects. So when I say new projects, they're actually adoption sites. We didn't bring in any more new exemplar projects. We brought in new um, adoption sites through due diligence carried out either by the adoption sites in our programme or by exemplars telling us that they had found somebody else who wanted to participate. In Bevan Commission, we wanted to make sure this was very fast. So we created a 48 hour turnaround to the application process for new adoption sites once this was underway. What we announced in our interim report, um, which we uh, stopped around November looking at the data, is that 85% of the sites were carrying on. 
Um, this was massive for us because the ad hoc information we were receiving and obviously due to sensitive nature, we can't quite capture that in research terms, was that a lot of innovation projects stopped. And what Nick alluded to, it was a very good time for anybody who was slightly bored to say, actually, I'm out, thanks. And they didn't. And they didn't, despite our fears that they would have to stop. Some people went down to one people teams when they started with eight or nine, um, but still carried on. But just to give you a flavour of the type of adoption sites and services I'm talking about, they were a mix. So some of what you're hearing from me and what you hear from Nick, we have to put that into a, into a context of what exactly is the innovation trying to achieve. You'll see from the um, Adopt and Spread programme that we had a lot of service level changes that were taking place through this um, process. So, so it's the right mix of, of um, projects. I'm not going to say here that we were looking at one type of, of, of service change or anything that carried on. So this methodology that we're going to come back to you with um, is very much tested on a national program that was across the board um, working in different areas, working with different types of health and care professionals and working in social care as well as care homes um, as some of the people who were receiving their support. I'm just going to let you read this. So basically, from our point of view, this is one of the largest known mixed methods action based research and evaluation programs in the UK. We are contributing new knowledge and new approaches to the area of how adoption can be carried out faster. And we have maintained a level of traction through the work that the exemplars and the adoption sites have made in Wales that I would say is unprecedented given COVID-19 impact on this type of work. I'm just going to very quickly go over what is coming in the future for you. So a conceptual model is being uh, developed and, and this concept of it, it's a decision to ad adopt, it's actually a lot of adaptation, growth and implementation that takes you forward into sustaining innovation. That's really what we're talking about here. This isn't a simple adopt, get on with it and land it conversation. We know that and we've tested that and we've tried various ways to simplify it. I just want to say a little bit about what we think happened here. Clearly, the work we'll be presenting in June will give you a flavour of everything that we want to present to you as results. But what happened here is exemplars came forward, any innovator, concept or an idea, they took on their first few adoption sites. Over time, more people are benefiting from what is an exemplar innovation. When we first entered this, our first few adoption sites would have entered it thinking they were going to do exactly the same thing. Many of our adoption sites showed that they couldn't do exactly the same things, the context changed, but some of them actually improved it to the point that the exemplar is looking at a slightly changed or very changed innovation, which is better for the health and care service. So they've made their mark in terms of what the innovation looks like. So the question we keep asking is if you're seeing this innovation work with the first few adoption sites, what's next? Well, we think that there's two things that's next. We think the leaders have a job to do at organisational level, regional level, national level, possibly international level. But we also think the innovator has, has some work to do in terms of thinking about the bursting point let alone thinking about the first few adoption sites for the wonderful cohort five who have grad who finished their programme with us. So we, we have a couple of offers for the current and future exemplars and innovators of this world trying to make a difference in health and care. We have resources and how to guides and opportunities to get involved. Some of this will come through workshops and offers through the Bevan Commission, and we are embedding our learning in the All Wales Intensive Learning Academy for Innovation in Health and Care in Wales in particular, but open to anybody who is interested in this. One of the flagship workshops that we've developed as part of Adopt and Spread is called Boxing Up Your Innovation. And we will be announcing more workshops where this has been tested and refined and is now ready for release as part of how-to guides and workshops that we'll be offering 
both in terms of that academy I've just mentioned, but also through the Bevan Commission. We have also introduced that workshop through the Medi Wales Connect event yesterday to innovators. And it is very much about how you package up what an innovation uh, can bring as benefits, but also the how part of it, um, how you package that up and take that forward. We've learned a lot and we're, we're supporting others in, in learning from that. So just to finish off, I want to say we're here to help. The 25th of May, we will be announcing a masterclass for leaders. There will be a pre-workshop session ahead of that, one week ahead of that. Do watch out for it. Toolkits, resource and masterclasses are part of the final piece of our work with the Adopt and Spread programme. So you will be hearing more from us about what we'll be doing in May and June for that. So I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all the past participants. And as Exemplar 5, um, Cohort 5, I'd just like to invite you to think about what we've learned, but also what you would like from us and just get in touch. <laughs>